I want to talk a little bit about the Yoga Sutras. This is a book that I use in yoga teacher training that I've used personally over the past 14 years. It is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are a guide to really living a yogic lifestyle. So today I just want to share with you a few of the Yoga Sutras to help you deepen your yoga practice. So if you have a physical yoga practice here at Joy, this is going to kind of give you a, an idea of how our physical practice can affect the mind which is really what the physical practice is doing, is preparing the mind for meditation in order for us to work to come into that one point of concentration. So whenever we're concentrating on one thing, that thing comes to fruition much more readily, right? When we give something our full attention, we're really working on it. When we're scattered all over the place, nothing gets our full attention, then we feel like nothing really gets complete. So our souls kind of feel the same way. Uh, so first Yoga Sutra is now the exposition of yoga is being made. So we have to decide that we want to do this practice, that we care about our mind, body, and energy, our soul enough that we want to do these practices. So Patanjali says, without practice, nothing can be achieved. I love that. And the translation and commentary in this book is by Sri Swami Sachinananda, which was my teacher. My teacher was Vimala Renfield. Her teacher was uh, Swami Sachinananda. So this is part of the lineage at Joy, which is integral yoga. And Swami Sachinananda is very great at commentary. He really boils things down and makes it digestible, which I love. So he says, mere philosophy will not satisfy us. We cannot reach the goal by mere words alone. Without practice, nothing can be achieved, which we know is true about everything, right? In order to be successful, we need to practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. I'm not sure if anything's ever perfect, but you know the saying, okay? So we choose. Now the exposition of yoga is being made. To me, I love this too, because it's Another variation of the sutra is yoga begins now, like the practice begins now, which is something that we can uh, center into any time we want, right? If we get off track, we can say, okay, yoga begins now. Yoga as a lifestyle is what I'm talking about. Yoga begins now. I'm going to begin again. You can begin again and again and again and again. And especially if you come to it with that beginner's mind, even if you've revisited something a hundred times, you come to it with a beginner's mind, you get clear and fresh insight into so many things. So it's beautiful. You know, we don't need a million different practices. We just need to practice the one thing that our heart calls us to. Without practice, nothing can be achieved. So the second sutra is what the whole rest of the book is written about. It, it explains how to do this, okay? The restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff is yoga, okay? The restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff is yoga. Yogas chitta vritti naroda. That's the Sanskrit. Yogas chitta vritti naroda. And this is it. That's all you need for the rest of your life. The restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff is yoga, okay? So he says, we'll discuss the meaning of each word of the sutra. Normally the word yoga is translated as union, but for a union, there should be two things to unite. In this case, what is to unite with what? So here we take yoga to mean the yogic experience, the extraordinary experience gained by controlling the modifications of the mind is itself called yoga. Chittam is the sum total of yoga. To have a full picture of what Patanjali means by mind, you should know that within the chittam are different levels. So there's the ego, the I, right? There's the booty, which is this discriminative faculty. And there is the manas, which is the desiring part of the mind. So all these things are always happening in our mind. Those are the things that tell you, you when you're trying to meditate or be peaceful, there's like, he gives an example, there's a smell in the kitchen and it smells really good. And you're like, I smell that. Uh, should I go look at it? 
do I want to eat that? Right, you go through this whole process kind of simultaneous, like all at once. So when then we work to restrain the modifications of the mind stuff. So when we do these practices, we're aware of all this happening. We've become the seer, right? We step back a little bit, we become the seer. So we are aware of this happening, but we're not necessarily reacting to it. Okay, so we're restraining the modifications, the vrittam, modifications of the mind stuff. And that is the whole of yoga. If you can do that, if you can be self-aware to recognize when the ego is creeping in, this happens all the time with emotions and the stories attached to our emotions and memories and all that. We're not ignoring it. We are aware of it. And then we're working not to react to it. We can breathe into it, create space for it, allow it to heal because we're very dynamic beings. We require, you know, we, we, we require what we require. But if we're working to recognize that we don't have to identify with every single thought and desire, but we just need to be aware of it as a ripple on the ocean, then that's restraining. Then we become the union, right? We become that one point of concentration, which brings us home to our true nature. We abide in our true nature, which I believe is the third sutra, okay? When you restrain the modifications of the mind stuff, what I just explained, then the seer or the self abides in his own nature. You are that true seer. You are not the body nor the mind. You are the knower or seer. You always see your mind and body acting in front of you. You know that the mind creates thoughts. It distinguishes desires. The seer knows that, but is not involved in it. So those, it's a little bit of the Yoga Sutras that I wanted to share. That's a little bit about what we do in our yoga teacher training. There is one coming up in June that I'm doing early mornings. So this is for the person that has no time in the world. It is a very immersive. It's a three month yoga teacher training. We're going to meet once a week in the morning at five ish in the morning. I got to set an exact time. Uh, you'll have the online course and we're going to stay connected via text and email and videos. And you know, we're going to get through the three months. So if you feel called to learn more about yoga, whether or not you want to become a yoga teacher is up to you. But if you want to immerse yourself in the teachings and you are very limited on time, I know so many of us are busy and it's summer. And we want to you know, get the day started early. 5 a.m. is great. We'll get it going. Uh, you'll be done in three months. You'll get through the training. If you're interested in doing that, if you want it to be a 300 hour, then I can do that for you too. Just let me know and we'll talk. There'll be more information about that, but mostly I really just wanted to share the yoga sutras with you, whatever with the yoga teacher training. Uh, and you know, let me know what you think, how it resonates with you, what thoughts come up. I love talking about it, conversation, analyzing. Uh, how it impacts and influences your life and your practices. So thank you for sticking with me. Namaste.